Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my studio for another project. And today I have another crafting project for you, another beading project. It's been a couple of weeks since I made a necklace, so it must be high time. And I did see this design here floating around over on Pinterest and wanted to give it a try. Of course, I want to make mine out of sparkling black jet glass beads. There's no real surprise there. And actually all the materials I'll be using today, I did pick up at Michael's Crafts. So if you have a Michael's Crafts store near you, you can also grab all these same materials and replicate this exactly if you'd like to. But seeing as this sort of bead weaving does take a little bit of time, let's go ahead and dive on in. I'm going to be using some Beadalon black beading wire thread stuff here. And actually for this, the longer a strand you cut the better. This is actually about three yards of this and even this I had to splice together to create the last strand of my bead weaving like the main part of this necklace. So the longer you can uh, get away with using the better I would cut like a five yard piece honestly uh, unless you want to do a lot of crimping and I'll show you how I secretly crimped another strand on here later on. And these crystal cut black glass beads from Michaels that I'm using today are from a brand called Bead Landing. Each strand of these are like a hank of these that you get at the store. It comes with four different sizes. I won't be using the largest size of bead from this, but the other three sizes I will use. And I'm going to go ahead and refer to those as small, medium, and large so that we don't get too confused today. And as pretty usual, my seed beads are a size 11, and these are Charlotte cut seed beads. I can link where I found these Charlotte cuts below. I'm going to start with my first little quatrefoil little circle of beads here. And to do so, I'm going to thread on a large bead and then one medium on either side and then lock through another large pulling that all the way down to the center of my very, very long strand of bead wire. I have the large bead surrounded by two mediums and then locked through that size large bead. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and thread on six seed beads on either strand. And then I will lock these with a size medium bead indicated with a blue bead here on my little chart that I have for you. So I'm just going to go ahead and lock through a size medium and again, pull that all the way down to the end of my very long cord. The longer strand you work with, the more annoying it is, but you don't have to switch and like figure out how to link on more cord later. So it's kind of worth it, but it is annoying at the start, that's for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and create another of this little quatrefoil thing by threading on one small bead, indicated again by the green on my chart above, on each strand and then locking that through another medium. And then I will just go ahead and repeat that. So again, six seed beads on each strand, locking through a size medium, thread on two size smalls, lock through a medium, and again, until I have four circles of seed beads here, and then the next quatrefoil, I will do that first size again. So I'll switch back up to the size large beads with the mediums uh, in between. Hopefully you can see what I mean from either looking at what's in my hand or looking at the chart above here. Um, and I'm just going to repeat that several times across for the length around my neck. I ended up having five sections across the length of my necklace, which was, uh, I think most of these recommend only four, but I wanted it to continue around the, to the back of my neck without having too much chain back there. So I have this almost closing in the back of my neck. And that's why I have five sections of these little lengths in between the larger buddies. And once I get to the end of the other side, I'm going to make sure that I lock through actually the bottom size medium here so that both of my strands of thread are coming out of the size medium here. And then I'm going to string on two larges and lock through a medium. So a large bead on either strand and then lock through a size medium like so. So I've just created another little quatrefoil thingy using the bottom of the first one as the top of this next one, which is what I'm going to do again. Basically, I'm using that as a spacer in between the next strand and the first of my necklace. So I'll go ahead and again, thread on a large bead, a medium bead, and then a large bead onto the other side and lock through that size large that will start off my new strand. Um, this is actually a very simple design. Once you get your head around this one, it's very easy. Unlike the first necklace I made, I think I'm getting, I'm going from hardest necklace to understand to easiest uh, as far as my recent beading videos, um, because the last necklace I made in that bronze color wasn't so bad. And this one I think is even easier to understand than that once you kind of get going and look into what you're actually doing here. And now that I finished that first section of my second strand here, I'm going to feed back up through that uh, bottom medium bead from this quatrefoil above to create again another quatrefoil in the middle as a spacer and then you can keep beading the next strand. Hopefully this makes any sense. I did find a, I think it's a preciosa pattern. I'm not sure where the beading pattern that I found for this is from. I didn't follow it super exactly, but it's the exact same idea. So I will link all the inspiration images I found on Pinterest for this particular style and that pattern that I found as well um, in the links below. So if you'd like to reference the resources that I was, I will have those linked for you because I don't always do the best job of explaining things. Um, it's like a math class, you know, sometimes the teacher explains it 
and you might get it, but your friend doesn't. So you explain it to them and then suddenly they get it when you explain it. The more people explain something to you, sometimes the easier it is, or the more chance there is uh, of one of those ways of explaining something clicking for you. But just going all the way along for the second strand, the same way as the first, and then linking those up at the large bead sections. Once I get to the other side, I'm going to continue on uh, by creating the third strand in much the same way that I started this second strand. So stringing on a little quatrefoil from the first as a spacer in between and then finishing off. And then again, I will need to create another spacer below and then continue the next strand. But at this point, my wires are actually getting a little too short and I worried they wouldn't make it across another strand of this going in and out, locking along beads as I went. So I was worried this wasn't going to be enough cord. So once I start this next little section of my third strand, I actually have some black crimp beads that are <laughs> nearly identical to the black glass beads that I'm using. They're about the same exact size. So in this little ring where I have six seed beads on the top strand, six on the bottom, I actually did three seed beads, one black crimp bead like this, and then two more seed beads to create that little loop down there. But instead of locking in that size medium for my next part of my design, I'm going to string both of my threads all the way through that crimp bead and then very carefully go ahead and crimp that down into place. Don't accidentally crush a black glass bead because that's very easy to do. Uh, make sure you have the crimp when you're doing something like this. But this is an invisible yet secure way for me to finish off this wire so I can just feed my ends through and cut those off close to the beadwork here. And now I have this finished edge where I finished off basically at one of my medium beads as part of my pattern, I can loop another, you know, yard and a half long piece of beading wire through that last bead and just continue on as if nothing had changed. Even though I am on a new piece of wire, you won't be able to tell when looking at the necklace and functionally it is the same as well. So thread that through and then I can just keep going all the way along, just like I did for the second strand, connecting at the larger bead sections as I go across. Of course, you can change up any of the sizing of this by changing the size of the beads um, using something else besides seed beads. I think the pattern that I had found floating around on Pinterest uses size three or four check glass beads as the smaller beads in this design. And as soon as you change the size or shape of the beads, the size and finished look of the necklace is going to shift just a little bit, which gives you a lot of room for creativity, honestly. You can come up with all kinds of different stuff. Many people have come up with different designs using this very similar technique, and you can find those designs floating around on Pinterest like I do, or just come up with your own, depending on what you're after. And once I get to the other side, actually on this last loop of seed beads, I have a crimp on the top and the bottom hidden amongst these seed beads. So I can go ahead and feed all this cord back through after I finish off the end back through those seed beads and crimp it off and have a nice clean finished end of this that you will not be able to tell where the cord ends basically. Um, of course, if you're using a like nylon beading thread for this, you can just tie it off. I really do prefer either beadalon. Uh, my favorite type of beading wire is actually a brand called Soft Flex, but I couldn't find black Soft Flex on short notice. But the flexible beading wires like Soft Flex or beadalon actually have quite a bit of body to them. So the necklace like the collar part of this necklace stands up really well by using that. So if I used nylon cord for this, it would actually be a bit too floopy to stand up nicely. And I have to wear it a bit tighter around my neck to have it stand up. But because this beetle on wire has quite a bit of body to it, it's helping this more structured section of my necklace keep that same sort of shape and body as well. And I will switch to nylon cord when I do the floopies on this. So you'll see that and you will be kind of able to see why. Now to finish this off after I had gone through and crimped down my wires through those secret crimps I had hidden in amongst the seed beads. I'm just going to finish this off because it is actually quite good size for my neck. It's only about an inch, maybe an inch and a half shorter than around my neck the measurement would be, not that I measured, uh, because I'm just going to go ahead and put two little chains on one side and then two lobster clasps on the other using large sized jump rings to kind of slip those in between my beads. Just doing one at the top and one at the bottom of my design. That way I can wear and adjust this necklace as need be when it comes to uh, actually wearing the thing. And I actually just turned a couple of beads on some tiny little black head pins. I searched my entire like junk drawer full of beads here in the studio. Not that I have such a thing, a messy drawer full of beads and stuff. No, I, of course I'm hyper organized and I don't have a drawer full of miscellaneous things. Um, and I was able to turn a couple of glass beads on those head pins just to finish off my chains for this to give them a nice completed look. And really this necklace is completely wearable at this point, but of course I want dangly floopy fringes along the bottom of this. So I'm going to again, grab that nylon beading thread that I've used 
in some of my other projects because unlike the beetle on it is less structured and has a better drape to it so for the drapey bits i like using the nylon thread instead and it does mean if any of these break the main structure of this necklace is not affected so that's kind of nice that if any of these uh, strands ever get caught on anything from hanging from the bottom um, if one of those snaps the rest of the necklace should be fine but i doubled this thread on a beading needle those beetle on beading needles you see me use quite often here on the channel for many things including beadwork and then also embellishing on clothes and i've just tied a knot at the end of my doubled thread here and i've made sure that the ends are clipped off the knots which is this little tiny like double triple knot that i've hidden amongst the seed beads to anchor it up in this main section up here on the necklace and then i can thread through to the bead i want my fluke to start at I can start stringing on various beads i started with about six seed beads then one size small one seed bead one size small one seed bead so i went for four size smalls total three mediums and one large while beading these little floops but you can do whatever you want of course strand on as many layers of fringes as you would like as many loops and swoops as you should desire honestly and i just made my way across the three center sections just connecting that at the bottom of the uh, like thicker strands of my fencing <laughs> of the necklace itself and then i'm going to come back the other direction with a slightly shorter strand here I could have made this a tiny bit longer. I wish I had put like two more seed beads at the start of this strand um, because it, things look different when they're sitting flat on your beading mat like this than when you put them up on your neck uh, just because when things start getting the 3D volume of being around a cylinder, AKA your neck, or as close to a cylinder, um, they flow a little bit differently. So it's good to actually pick this up and hold it up against your neck if you have a mirror nearby to see how it's looking as you go. So you can change things on the fly as need be which I do have a mirror nearby, so there really is no excuse for me not having this perfectly the way I'd like. But just stringing my way back across this necklace with this next set of flounces, and once I get back to the start, I will just kind of weave my thread through a couple of beads and then tie it off because this is the nylon cord I can just tie knots in it which is nice I don't have to worry about having secret crimps hidden in my design which is nice if you've ever watched my spiderweb style necklaces that I've done here on the channel those I did have a lot of secret crimps hiding in the design to be able to facilitate putting the beetle on where I wanted it but with the nylon cord I can just tie a knot which is very convenient But I threaded on another strand here just so that I can do some last few drops in between my flounces here. And I'm going to use some teardrop shaped beads. And the way I'm locking those on is I'm putting a seed bead at the end of my teardrop and then uh, going back up through the teardrop, but not through that seed bead. So it holds the end of that on there. And I'll feed my cord back up through. So I have this lovely little drop in between my uh, flounces and I'll do one last flounce with a little teardrop for the center as well just to accent the center of my necklace and make it a tiny bit longer than the rest like so and then come up the other side do that same little floop in between the other two flounces and while the last couple of necklaces I've made here on the channel actually did take me uh, quite a few hours, usually split over two or three days, so I didn't get too frustrated or lost, um, this one actually only took me around four or five hours, so I made this in one evening while listening to some podcasts here in the studio. So this really is a simpler design. Either I've gotten faster or this design is just easier to make. flashlight so I can show you how this sparkles hopefully maybe kind of you know at those uh, dinner parties in my very gothic dining room that I don't have yet but a girl can dream I started collecting a uh, cut black glass 
uh, like dinnerware stuff, although I'm having the hardest time finding black charger plates. A gal just wants to set up the dining room that she doesn't have, you know? Let a girl dream about black charger plates, but the only ones I can find are a gajillion dollars, so I'm gonna have to work on that. But I'm super happy with how this necklace came out. I really like the almost geometric kind of black beadwork fence kind of style this collar has. It almost looks like uh, Victorian jet morning uh, buckles to me. That's kind of what these little sections end up looking like in this sort of style and finish of beads. And I'm really pleased to have another sparkling black necklace in my collection because as we know, I just don't have enough. And as I say, every time I do a beading video, I do still need to make some lower necked jackets and dresses and tops to wear with these sort of necklaces because I keep making the necklaces and I don't have a ton in my wardrobe that has a low enough neckline to wear them. Um, this neckline on this t-shirt works quite well, so I'll have to copy this and put it on a dress so I can wear my collar necklaces that I keep making just because I usually maximize my brooch real estate by having a higher neckline on things. But clearly, now that I'm making these necklaces, I need some more necklace appropriate dresses. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this necklace came together today and thank you as always for watching. I'll be back with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon, so I'll see you then. Bye!